Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of Slightly Warped. I'm Rick. Joining me today, as always, Big Show. Show, how was your weekend? How was your fourth? It was great, relaxing, wonderful. Just chilled most of the weekend, except for Sunday when I damn near died because I cut the grass. Other than that, we're good. Yeah, I had that near death experience on Friday, but uh, Ooh, it wasn't as hot then. <laughs> yeah, but I should have did it. Uh, on Friday because it rained Saturday and I seen it was going to rain Sunday night. So I was like, let me, let me get it while I can. Cause I am not going out there on, on the fourth. So we got a lot, you know, it was interesting. I thought it was going to rain yesterday. I ran a couple miles uh, yesterday morning. Cause you know, just had to get a couple in for the fourth. Um, this was early in the morning and we got some thunder and a little darkness and I noticed this at the one mile mark. By the time I got three miles in, it had cleared off. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a hot one. <laughs> so yes, sir. And it was. It's a good thing that I did not barbecue. I went ahead barbecued on Friday. I didn't want to be bothered yesterday. Yesterday was I thought about it, but my wife said, Don't worry about it. So I'll probably get whatever I was gonna grill on there this week. So it's just me and her. So yeah, we're now, good. I, I understand yesterday was a holiday, but yesterday to me meant do nothing. Yep, exactly. Because my philosophy is if I don't have to go to work, I'm not going to work hard at nothing. Nothing. I think the only thing we did was uh, eat a bunch of Oreos and, and watch movies. So, hey, I hear you. All right, so check it out. We got a couple topics here I want to go through. The first one, Dealing with something that we all hurting at gas prices. Only Boy. there's a new twist. And I noticed this not when I read this article, but beforehand. I had to come up to Kansas City last week for a funeral. And I noticed that when I used my card to uh, pay for gas, they put mm -hmm. a hold on my uh, on some of my money in the account. And I'm like, well, this is new. And I'm willing to bet you it's because of gas prices. Sure enough, it is. Because uh, even though it only took about 40 to fill up the SUV, uh, they put a hold on 125. And Probably because people are, are driving away. Well, this article here is about it. Uh, gas prices, it says, are unfathomably high. And 19 states are contending with prices at or near $5 a gallon. That's us included. Uh, yes, sir. Not one state, not one out of 50 is below four anymore. Um, now, as a result, many folks are starting to pull back on how much they put in their tanks and at the same time trying to uh, curb their spending habits. However, gas stations have started placing holds on anything up to or over $150 on individuals' credit and debit cards even before the gas reaches their tanks. And um, uh, there's a couple here that says they even went as far as $175 hold. And uh, this pre-authorization is because of the consequences of soaring gas prices. Um, the temporary charge is immediately placed on the card when you insert uh, it into the machine. It, it has nothing to do with um, people driving off as, you know, pay at the pump if you got cash. If, if, if you've got debit and credit cards, they're doing it, it says here, to protect themselves from overdrafts. Um, so I guess um, really hard to get an overdraft on a credit card, but I guess. Well, and a debit card. Your debit card shouldn't let you overdraft either. It shouldn't. Um, but. From what I know about most debit cards, it doesn't put a hold on that money, and it can take up to 24 hours for that to come off of your account. So let's say you got $50 in the bank. I'll just throw in that number out there. And you put 40 in the right. bank. And then you go to the bank, the ATM, and you take $50. <laughs> you got 50 in your pocket and free gas. And so the bank hits you for that overdraft fee, and then you know, the gas station hits you back up. So, yeah, I don't know why you do that because you're going to end up paying more in the long run. But right. I, can, I can totally see that happening. 
especially with gas prices the way they are, they probably have gotten a lot of people that in order to get by will do that. And because now they can put a pre-authorization hold on your account immediately, they guarantee themselves um, able to get that money. The only thing I don't like about it is um, how long does that authorization stay on there? Now, me personally, it didn't hurt me because, you know, I, I knew that I was going to be spending a lot of money driving up to Kansas City and back, so I had plenty in the account. But if you've only got 150 in your account and you only need to get $20 worth of gas, but they put a $125 hold on your account, that's going to suck, especially if it takes one or two days for the pre-op to come off. So we don't know how long the pre-op takes to come back off? It uh, did not say in this article at all. Hmm. I mean, because if you like, if they're going to pre-authorization for 100 bucks or whatever, and you only put 60 in, they should make it to where automatically that other 40 comes right back in because you only took 60 of the 100 that they offer. I am agreeing whatever, with so. you. I believe that that's the way it should be. Um, and and I hope that that's, I hope that that's correct. Because there's gonna no have a lot people. of pissed off people. <laughs> you ain't never lying. That's going to be messed up. Man, you um, know gas prices are high. When I took my motorcycle to the gas tank the other day, and it cost me almost 16 bucks to fill that bad boy up. When normally it's like four or five. Wow, so, yeah. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I I was like, are you kidding me? $15. And I know it's a motorcycle still, but 15 bucks to fill it up. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, you know, I said it took 40 to fill up the SUV. That was from the halfway point. I don't dare mm -hmm. let it get below that. Um, and these gas prices are crazy, but. Right, but you're going to pay it regardless, so. Yeah, you, you got to do it. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, let's 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 play a game here. Uh, I'm gonna throw out some celebrity names, and I want you to tell me if you believe that this celebrity is difficult to work with, or an absolute delight to work with. And this comes <laughs> from a article from Yahoo on BuzzFeed. Um, All right. First one, Mike Myers. Oh, Austin Powers himself. I would think he would be okay, but probably because he's on the list, probably his personality wise, he'd probably be a pain in the butt. Yes, they say that he's reportedly very rude. Uh, Jim Parsons, aka Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd probably say pain in the butt. Uh, actually, very nice to work with. I could see that too, but I could also see the pain in the butt. The Rock. And I'd have to say he's got to be nice to work with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, that one's an easy guess because he wouldn't be getting so many projects if he was right. The and yeah, and plus being you know a professional wrestler, you're in the public eye all the time. I, you wouldn't want that bad. No. You yeah. know, juju following you. Exactly. Uh, Christian Bale. Man, that's a tough one. He kind of looks like he walks around with like his shit don't stink. So I'll say that he's probably a pain in the butt. And you are correct. And I would have said the same thing instantly because I remember, God, I don't know how many years ago it was. It was one of those Terminator movies. He was in that movie, and I remember that they had him on the set. They recorded him just absolutely going off on what a... What did he uh, play in the Terminator movies? He played the older version of John Connor in the future. Really? Yeah, Terminator Salvation. So I guess that would be the fourth Terminator movie. Hmm. God, I don't even know how okay. many numbers there are now, but yeah. 153. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Same amount as Rocky. They're, they're about tied. A, a, a studio personnel person on the set got in his eye line and threw him off, and he just went off on them. Wow. Yeah. Somebody who's not even on camera. Uh, how about Jennifer Lawrence? Ooh, Jennifer Lawrence. She I is. I'll tell you a curve. 
She's mocking Jay, right? Mockingbird, yes. Hunger yeah. Games. Man, she's got to be cool to work with. I've seen her on some interviews. She, her personality seems to be good, but I'm probably wrong. No, you were right. She's very nice to work with. Okay. Yeah, she seems like just her. when you get interviewed, you just, I don't know. All right, who? what's next? Chevy Chase. Probably an asshole to work with. Yes. He's Hugh that Jackman. old school comic. Hugh Jackman? Yeah. <sighs> mm, difficult. Nope. Very nice. Surprising. Uh, Drew Barrymore. Ooh. Probably say in this stage of her career, she's probably okay to work with, but maybe when she first started, she was a pain in the butt. It does say that she's very nice to work with. Uh, Bruce Willis. Butthole. Yes. And I kind of knew that from, uh, what was it, an article way back when Expendables 3 came out. He was not in that one. And I guess Sly was trying to get him to come back. And if I'm correct, it would have been like three or four days of work. They were going to give him $3 million. And he didn't want to do it because it wasn't enough for him. Now, I don't know about oh. you. A million dollars a day to act? Where do I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure I can make that happen. I can find time in my... <laughs> Tough schedule. Oh, Sly, I guess I'll get up and come down there. Yo, hey, where do I sign? Right. Bill Murray. Mm, that's a tough one. He's probably on the lines of Chevy Chase, but I'd say he's probably cool to work with. Nope. They say that he's reportedly rude. Wow. Keeping with comedians, Adam Sandler. He's got to be totally cool to work with. Yes, the water boy is very nice to work with, they say. Yeah, I would say. Uh, Tom Hanks. Oh, you know, I'm going to, I would normally say probably good to work with, but I'm going to tend, because I think this is a trick question, but I've seen something on um, some TMZ video where him and his wife were walking out of some award ceremony or something. And the paparazzi, like, accidentally bumped his wife. And he went, like, ape shit, like, F-bombing them and everything. So really? I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say he's he probably has a difficult side. I'm probably wrong, but. It does say opinion. that he's very nice to work with. Unless you touch his wife. And then, yeah, then he becomes Will Smith on you. Yeah. Um, Edward Norton. Edward Norton. I gotta place that name. Um, he um, was the Hulk, right? Yes, he was. Um, what other good movie was he in? You know what? Now that you mention, it, I can't think of too many movies that he was in. I'll have to look that up later because he was in a good movie called uh, Fear. No, uh, not Fear. It was called because uh, it had uh, uh, he played a serial killer in it. Or not a serial killer, but a killer. And he pretended to be stupid, and he really wasn't. Ooh, uh, like that he had was, a split personality. I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, you're, Richard you're, Gere was in it. Yes, he was the attorney. And then at the yeah. very end, you found out that he got played. Yeah. I can't think of the name of that movie, but that's a really good movie. Um, I'm going to say difficult to work with. He is. Uh, what do we got here? Keanu Reeves. He's got to be cool to work with. He is. They say he's very good to work with. And rounding it out with a woman, Jennifer Lopez. She's probably a diva. But I'd say she's probably cool to work with. Very rude. Really? Yes. yes. I mean, so that's not so far. Unless you're Ben Affleck, uh, she don't give a damn about you. And even he had to go around a second time. So. Roger that. It, it is uh, it is interesting. Now, a lot of these actors and actresses, um, I understand that they go through a lot of stressful stuff, but at the end of the day, and, and this is just 52-year-old me talking, because I know where I'm at in life, so if I had fame thrust upon me all of a sudden, in my mind, it cannot be tougher than things that I've already been through in life, so I would right. not take it out on people. 
But what do I know? I mean, maybe you might have one bad day, but when it becomes a a pattern that you're a butthead to work with, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of working with people and actors and actresses, I don't know. Have you ever watched the new incarnation of Magnum P.I.? No, sir. Okay. Um, Got to tell you, it's a damn good show. It went four seasons on CBS. And uh, we figured, hell, this thing's going to be on 10 years. It's a good show. Had good ratings. Um, about uh, two months ago, it was reported that CBS canceled the show. And I'm like, what the hell? How do you cancel the <laughs> show that's doing good? Um, turns out uh, it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with the actors. It didn't have anything to do with the ratings. It all came down to money. Uh, the price it paid, the price they paid for not just filming on location in Hawaii, which other shows have done that for longer. Uh, but they also had to pay a portion to a specific company that I'll get to later because they own the rights to Magnum PI because the original show was on NBC. So oh. Magnum PI is actually going to be coming back. Guess who picked up the rights? Said company, NBC. N NBC, of course yeah. they did. Are they going to, is it going to be the same characters? And Yes, everybody's coming back. Same They're, plot line, picking up from the it's same picking right up. Uh, it's picking right up. Season five and six, they're calling it. They're picking it up for two seasons. So we will get two more seasons. They will be abbreviated seasons, though. I believe NBC said there'll be 10 episodes each season with the option for additional episodes. Now, I don't know Excellent. what that means as far as with the option. Will they extend a season or will they add another season? So we will see. I never was a huge Magnum PI fan, even when I was a kid, but I might check it out. It is not like the 70 something, 80 something uh, Tom Selleck Magnum PI. Same type of characters, you know, ex Navy SEAL who's a private investigator, but uh, I'd say this has a lot more humor in it, uh, definitely more action in it because it's directed by. Uh, and produced by Justin Lin, who did the Fast and Furious movies and a couple other things. So, I mean, you gotcha. know, from the first 30 seconds of the first episode, one of the Ferraris got tore up by a dump truck. So, you know. <laughs> Is it the same type of Ferrari? Um, no, it was a newer, newer model, version. but it's still a red convertible, but a newer model. Gotcha. And I think the black one got tore up too, but because he works for somebody who's filthy rich, he ends up with another one before the end of the show. So <laughs> must be must nice. Be nice. <laughs> right. Okay. As so, we say that in unison. Check it out. I, I was reading this story and, you know, because I like good laughs. It says worker who is accidentally paid 300 times his salary takes the money and runs. So I guess this was in, uh, what country was this? Uh, in Chile. Um, he got an overpayment on his check. And he checked with the manager about it, who then flagged HR. He agreed to return the cash and promised to go by the bank the following day. But instead of giving it back, the man withdrew it all and hasn't been around since. So, this is interesting. 300 times your normal check. So, let's say you get paid, we'll say weekly, 300 weeks. That's um, 52 weeks in a year. That's what, six years up front of payments? I don't yep. know if the math is right. Close. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how the law works in Chile. So I'm, I'm not even going to begin to speculate. But how do you think that works in the U.S.? You own a company, so you're the perfect person to ask this question. If your HR department accidentally paid somebody too much, on what grounds can you get the money back legally? And do they have any legal right to keep the money 
here's the thing. How fast did the company know it? Like, was it within a day of issuing the check? Because you can always stop payment on that check. What well, said he questioned it and his supervisor then took it to HR. So, gotcha. and if it's an automatic deposit, direct deposit, mm -hmm. I can actually pull my money back if it's a direct deposit. Yeah, I don't know how it was deposited. It doesn't say. It says that he was going to uh, go to his bank and get the money back. So I'm assuming it wasn't automatic. I don't know about that. Yeah, I, man, good for him. <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> did he leave the country? I mean, whoo. Hey, if I'm in Chile and I get 300 times my salary, I'm going to the United States. Yeah, I got enough I'm... bread where I can get me a little pad and, uh, you know, never be heard from again by the country of Chile. I mean, depending on what his actual salary was, because let's say he got paid, you know, it let, you know, Chile here. I don't know what the, what it cost of living is, but, you know, if it's American dollars, <laughs> <laughs> like in a, the, and and my company paid me three hundred times my salary. Oh yeah, y'all go to ghost. Just call me Casper because I'm out. I, I I can't blame you. And I'm going to a country that doesn't have any extradition. All right, big shows in Sweden. There you go. <laughs> hey, uh, but we can still podcast because they have internet. Hey, there you go. <laughs> The feds come knocking at my door. Where's he uh, contacting you from? The internet? But where? I don't know. It's on the internet, man. <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> children that are watching this show. It is not okay to keep that money. You give it back. Yeah. Okay. You better than me. Because, you know, I'm doing the math in my head. 300 times. We're setting dollars? examples here. We're setting examples here. <laughs> I'm setting an example on how to take the money and run. <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, you know, well, I would be um, out. I would probably, honestly, I would probably just buy a really nice yacht and I would just be on the water, not in any particular country at any given time, and just go in from port to port just to get my supplies and I'm back out on the water. Don't let the Coast Guard stop you. Hey, depends if they know who I am. As long as I'm not breaking any laws on the water, I wouldn't need to be stopped by the Coast Guard. Well, switching gears here, because, you know, a, a lot of our watching public, they like it when we talk about sports, whether it be yes, my, my, it. my great team or your raggedy ass team. Um, <laughs> we're not mentioning anybody directly, but I am putting this out there one week in advance to you because next week uh because we are getting towards it'll be the mid-july next week and um i want to talk about our top five uh and the four positions that we've been talk about and we touched on quarterbacks uh, last week so it should be easy uh but i want to see where we differ so sometime this week Give me your top five quarterbacks in the league right now, your top five wide receivers, your top five running backs, and your top five tight ends. Okay. And, and you know, your true top five. So there's going to be a Raider or two in that list. I know it's going to hurt you to, you know, put that name down. Not a quarterback. <laughs> You know what? It doesn't hurt me because we've already admitted he's at least in the top 10. He was like 8, 9, or 10, so he's not I, top 5. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I Hell, can tell you right think about now. This. Trent Dilfer. I, I, I can tell you think right about now. This. The Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. Be, yeah, but that's defense. It was I mean, all defense. You cut me deep, bro. I can tell you right now that there it would be a Raider on my top 5 list. But he'd be playing tight end, and that would be Waller. He would be on my top five at tight end. But oh, we'll you, discuss that next week. Yeah, you go, you're going to have one at, at, at wide receiver, too. I already know. We got the best okay. one I in mean, the game, bro. We got the best he, one in the game. Hold on. He ain't played for them yet. 
I can't help that. We got we we going. I mean, are we going top five like that have played now or I, like that that are that are projected top five for the year? Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. You that, know. That's why I'm asking. What's the parameters? Because if so, then yeah, obviously Adams would be in the top five, maybe four or five. <laughs> It does not hurt me to say Mahomes will be in that top one or two. It does not oh, hurt I get me. It. Now I'm it not going to say yet. Just, I'm not going to say like, next week whether I put him at one or two. A I lot of people I just like busting your chops. That's all. I, and, and and no, you won't hear me say cars in the top five. I'm 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 being realistic here. Um, maybe a push for seven, but uh, that's a different story. But did I say we have about ten minutes left? Yeah. I'm reading that right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got time. We got time. I mean, I so just since we're kind of simmer and you get back problem, But I want to, I want to change gears just a second here. We're still talking sports. Go for but it. Since we have some time, did you have a chance to take a look at that USFL championship game on Sunday? I did not. And I heard about it. Oh, oh my man. God. That was such a beautiful, fun football was game. Was that you that watch. posted on Facebook on that? Yes. Man, it, and I was kicking was, myself because it was after the fact. It was such a – I believe uh, it was 33-30 to 30 was the final score, and Birmingham mm. won. But um, it, it was a really fun game. And, like, Birmingham was the team that pretty much dominated everybody all year long. I think they only lost one game the entire year. And they were up 20-9 to nine at halftime. And then wow. Philadelphia came roaring back and was up 30 to 27. No, 30 to, yeah, 30 to 27, 30 to 28, somewhere in that arena or somewhere like that. And then Phil, or uh, Birmingham won in the last seconds of the game. But what's cool about that league is you're going to see some of the stuff that, just like the XFL did and the NFL yeah took some of those things, you're going to see the USFL, the stuff that they do. You're going to see the NFL, I bet, the next five, six years adopting some of that. I don't know if they'll ever go for the three-point conversion, but one of the things that I know that they were talking about uh, NFL rules-wise was instead of doing an onside kick, doing a fourth and 12 or fourth and 15 or whatever, mm -hmm. and if you get it, then that's – so they actually had that scenario in the championship game when um, uh, Philadelphia ha was trying to get the ball back so they could score to win the game instead of doing an onside kick they did a fourth and 12. And I'm telling you, fraction of an inch for this dude catching it. It would have been, it have been awesome. But just as a pure football fan sitting there watching it, it was fantastic. If you get a chance to watch the replay, the re, you know, of that's the game, what I was going to say. I'm going to see if the replay it. is on like ESPN Plus or something. And... It'll probably be on Fox Sports, man. Oh, okay. I mean, just, yeah, I'm sure you'll see it. They'll replay it. But yeah, if you get a chance to check it out. And I'm actually surprised and impressed. And I want to give them a clap that they actually made it through the entire year. And, you know, they make, I'm assuming they made money because they had three television stations, you know, doing it. I believe it was Fox and USA and I don't know who the other one was that was actually doing the doing the games, but they played Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. So maybe they'll have more teams next year. I don't know, but it was it was very fun to watch. Do you do you know how long the deal the TV deal is good for? I don't. I don't. Because um, I'm thinking if it's still an ongoing deal for at least the next couple of years. If the game was that exciting, that should definitely bring some more people uh, to the fan bases uh, for next year. Yeah, the championship game was awesome. Now, I, I've tuned in to some of the football games, and, you know, I'm not going to lie, I didn't sit and watch them all the time, you know, but I wanted to watch. I watched the first week, you know, religiously because I'm curious what it was like, and it was pretty good. Um, but, you know, the, the talent level from the very good team in that league to the bottom – was not that, you know, the, the gap was huge. Like Birmingham was top tier and I think and then there Jersey, was everybody else. Yeah, I think New Jersey kind of sucked, you know, 
but you know the the middle teams they fought you know but the games were ugly but this championship game you know if they did that and that was just for fans to see hey i'll check this out next year most definitely it was it was good but supposedly also xfl is going to be back next year too so you have yeah. two spring leagues i don't know how that's going to go and i think the rock was smart about it when he bought them by sitting the league down for an entire year just so that he could go through everything that they did the previous year that went wrong and then try to make adjustments and make things right. So I think that's going to work to his advantage. Also, it works to the advantage of having his name behind it. People are going to watch oh, it. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, but I don't know, because I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to have two spring leagues running simultaneously. Because we're going to be footballed out right after the Super Bowl. And then about a month in is when they start. But, you know, you have all the other, you know, you have the NBA playoffs happening. Baseball's rolling. It's it's a kind of a tight little window to make it work. I don't know if we're going to have, if both leagues are going to be viable. But, you know, good for us as fans. We'll have something to choose from. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Hypothetically, if the Raiders win the Super Bowl, I'm replaying the game every day until training camp next year starts over. Just putting that out there. I mean, I feel you. I, I did do that probably for the first month back in 2019. I tell you what I won't do, and that's even if I go to the, the parade, I'm not going to be like that dude in Kansas City that fell out of the tree. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> or the guy that went for a pass from Mahomes and hit the, car, hit the, oh, the parking meter. Yeah. That, yeah that parking knows. meter took him out. That'll leave a mark and make you a meme. So for real. But yeah, you, you won't have to worry about the Raiders winning the Super Bowl. You're good. Ah, oh, I I can't stand you. I can't. <laughs> you know what? And, and and here I am getting ready to give two Chiefs my top five next week. Your quarterback and your tight end. That's a given. I would say your receiver, but he's in Miami now. What? I yeah. I'm that's still a head scratcher. Hey, let me go he play for the scrub. He went for the money. Yeah, 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 he did. Have we not learned anything from the Michael Jordan rule book? Just take whatever salary your team gives you. If you're good enough, you can make more in endorsements. Just saying. He went for the money. So, toodles. <laughs> That's how I feel. Dude's his kick rocks. But you know what? He got He got the ring, so... I, I kind of get that, you know, a lot of athletes after they get that ring, they want to explore the uh, checkbook option because now they got the hardware. Right. And, and, you know, he went to, you know, for the money, he went to a state that doesn't have taxes. So, I, you know, he did what's right for him. Oh, he could have went to Vegas for that. He, but he lives in Miami anyway. That's right. He does. Well, whatever. He could have went to Tampa. Hell. It ain't far from Miami. True. But well, hey, I, he wanted to play with future Hall of Famer Tua Tangle, whatever, however you say his last name. Did you really say future Hall of Famer? You got, <laughs> you got more jokes than Bill Murray now. <laughs> hey, according to Ty Hill, Tua is more accurate than Patrick Mahomes. Well, uh, no question about sanity in the NFL. All right, kids. That's all the time we have for today, but make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. We will be back with another one next week. And remember, we are talking big time top five football. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show. Big Show. Thanks for coming on again, man. No problem, man. Thank you. All right. I'll see y'all later. We're out.